Danger Dolan. From Marvel C-list heroes to Sylvester Stallone's worst sidekick, we look at 15 characters who are just plain useless. Number 15. Storm in X-Men. So 2000's X-Men was one of the first attempts to do a Marvel comic series as a serious film adaptation, and much like the comic, it becomes the Wolverine show pretty quickly, even more so over the sequels. Because of this, a lot of the other awesome mutants get pushed to the sideline. Cyclops is mostly just the jerk, Jean Grey is a bland love interest, and Storm is just there for the ride. Given no character development and only getting to fight Toad in the first film, Storm spends the film standing in the background and occasionally offering up some terribly written dialogue. While not annoyingly useless, Storm is more of an underused badass that deserved better. Number 14. Zam Wessel in Star Wars Episode 2 Attack of the Clones. The Star Wars prequels are filled with useless characters, and Zam is one who doesn't get mentioned enough. Zam is the bounty hunter hired by Jango Fett to kill off Senator Amidala so it stops something something space politics. Why Zam is so useless though is that she decides that the best way to kill the former queen is poison space millipedes. More than that, when she gets caught by the Jedi, she wastes every opportunity to kill them from afar, sneaking right up to them like an idiot. Zam is played up to be a kick-ass bounty hunter assassin, and in the small time we get her on screen, she screws up every task the story has for her. Django should really pick up his subcontractors better. Number 13. Hudson in Aliens. One of Aliens' best remembered parts is its awesome Vietnam soldier inspired colonial marines. Tatted as the baddest mofos in space, Hudson spends the whole first half of the film mouthing off about it in every line he has. But when the xenomorph threat attacks though, the true Hudson comes out. A coward who talks bid but is about as useful as the cat from the first Alien film. Having a breakdown and spending the rest of the film talking about how they're going to die, making his famous Game Over Man rant. This is something when even your action figure is permanently terrified. Although while Hudson is a useless soldier, he is great comic relief, and in that way does redeem himself to the audience because he is hilarious for every second he's on screen. Number 12. Black Widow and Hawkeye in the Avengers. These two are both an issue mainly because of the characters that surround them in the Avengers. Black Widow and Hawkeye are incredibly skilled, talented, and can hold their own in a fight. But from a story point of view, they don't really do all that much. This is mainly because the main villain needs to be more powerful than Iron Man, the Hulk, Captain America, and a mythical Norse god in order to be threatening. In comparison, Hawkeye shoots arrows, and Black Widow shoots bullets while doing martial arts. Neither would stand a chance against the strong villain on their own, and really, how good is an archer going to help the Hulk? We see this in the Avengers as well, when Hawkeye shoots a bunch of arrows at Loki, and none of them do anything, because arrows don't beat superpowers. Hopefully they will get more useful in future Avenger adventures. Number 11. Elektra and Daredevil. Yes, we are picking on the Marvel heroine again. Looking only at Daredevil, Elektra is totally inept and exhausting as a character. Her highlights include beating up a blind man, totally blaming the wrong person for her father's death, beating up a blind man again, trying to catch a blade with her hand and then being stabbed by Colin Farrell. All of which make things worse for our hero. There is not one thing she does right except for being ace at murdering sandbags. We promise this is the last time we'll bring that up for now. Number 10. Ruby Rod in The Fifth Element. Chris Tucker has a reputation for being just a tiny little bit annoying, and this is the role that really earned him that reputation. Ruby comes out of nowhere in the film, suddenly thrust upon us as an over-the-top media personality and a clear opposite to our hero Corbin Dallas. The two butt heads and comedy ensues. Or at least it should. As a comic side character, Ruby is hit and miss, and the misses are mainly to do with the fact that he keeps making everything worse. Constantly repeating Corbin, Corbin, Corbin a million times over and screaming when anything happens. Ruby freezes up and basically has to be carried in Bruce Willis's muscular action arms through the plot making their relationship painfully useless. Number 9. Sam Witwicky in Transformers. Never has such a bad series of films made so much money. Look at Michael Bay's eyegasm of robots of explosions, it's pretty impressive. 
but seeing Shia LaBeouf looking confused and slack-jawed for three hours is not. Sam really shouldn't even exist in these films. We have giant transforming robots and we spend 80% of the story dealing with whether or not Sam will get laid. Because that's what we all paid to see in our fighting giant robot movie. Shia LaBeouf plays the character with all the charisma of a damp cloth. Never carries across any indication that he or his actions are important to the overall war. In the fight against the Decepticons, Sam is as useful as a transformer that turns into a toaster. Number 8. Cindy in Commando. Schwarzenegger's powerhouse of 80s action has a lot of good points. Cindy is not one of them. A character like many others in the dark time of female action sidekicks that is relegated to screaming a lot, awkwardly trying to help but making things worse. She screams, she kicks, and she winds her way through the film, being upstaged by child-aged Alyssa Milano. This exemplified perfectly when she tries to bust Schwarzenegger out of a police van with a rocket launcher. Getting confused, she aims the mighty weapon backwards and manages to blow up the city block behind her. Although she does work out to turn it around and fire at the van this time. Number 7. Willie Scott in Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Like Cindy, Willie suffers the same fate of being a mouth on legs that will make you want to open the arc and have your face melted off then have to listen to her for one more minute. Someone thought it was a funny idea to team up one of the world's bravest adventures with a jewelry obsessed insect fearing singer. How Indy put up with it through the whole film was a miracle, playing up the fish out of water aspect of her character, the singer has many moments of shock at the foreign culture that she is confronted with. Constantly complaining about how disgusting everything is around her, like her elephant smelling, the insects in the jungle, and fainting when she served chilled monkey brain for dessert. Okay, maybe that last one is a little bit disgusting. Number 6. Bella in the Twilight Saga. Twilight plays the dual role of being one of the most incredibly popular film series and also one of the most loathed and derided in recent memory. One such reason it gets so much criticism is the output of its protagonist. Bella doesn't take an active part in anything. She is whisked away into this world of sparkling vampires and shirtless werewolves, constantly being encompassed by the character's actions around her, and not really taking any actions but to be upset about sparkle guy and shirtless guy doing something. Bella almost is the monster movie equivalent of Sam Witwicky. Both are bland teenagers caught up in a secret battle between fantastical forces. While Sam is focused on getting into Megan Fox's pants, Bella is love obsessed. We spend so much of her story dealing with her romantic interests that the fighting vampires and werewolves just happen to be in the background, much like the Transformers in the robot battles. Number 5. Rachel in War of the Worlds. Tom Cruise's sci-fi epic Alien Invasion features many horrific and disturbing sights. None more so than of Dakota Fanning's tear-filled eyes and eardrum-piercing screams. Like most children would do when a fleet of evil aliens invade the planet, Rachel spends the whole film crying for her mummy, being carried around because she is too scared to run. While a realistic portrayal of child trauma, it leaves Rachel little to do because she is so scared all the time, and it eventually becomes so painful to sit through, much like the rest of Cruz's sci-fi films. Number 4. Tim and Lex in Jurassic Park Okay, so it seems like children in Spielberg films are always really, really scared. Tim and Lex are by far the worst part about the Jurassic blockbuster. Yes, even worse than Newman being the bad guy. Well, other than the T-Rex. They really don't do anything until suddenly at the end when Lex's computer genius comes into play, but even that isn't enough to redeem these two from just being awfully useless. Although while Lex does his computer thing, Tim just stands around doing nothing when he could have just run across the room to help Dr. Grant get that shotgun. Thanks for nothing, Tim. Number 3. Merry Goodnight in The Man with the Golden Gun As a rule, Bond girls are pretty useless, especially in the lesser Bond films. In Roger Moore's second outing, he is paired up with fellow agent Miss Goodnight. Goodnight is lacking in a few areas one might deem important for an agent of an intelligence agency, mainly the intelligence part. Goodnight spends a lot of the film four steps behind Bond and has the honour of being locked in a car boot while planting a homing device by Saruman and the tiny guy from Fantasy Island. 
and she almost takes off 007's head by pressing a deadly solar laser button with her bum. Number two. Herman Ferguson in Judge Dredd. No one should let Rob Schneider in front of a camera. This poor adaptation of 2000's AD's comic drops the dark satirical humor of the source and instead replaces it with Herman Ferguson, a criminal hacker who is bad at the one thing he is going to jail for. In the early 90s, Schneider was paired up with Stallone and a few others as a sort of cheap lethal weapon Joe Pesky, there to provide comic relief and more or less play some role in helping the good guys. But in this case, it would be better if he just walked away. The film really wouldn't have played out too differently. And honestly, Herman does have one part where he is useful, but he is still bad at it. In the climax of the film, a giant killer robot shows up to deal with Judge, I am the Lord Dread, and Herman does manage to hack and disable the robot, but he does get shot quite lethally. Although yes, he does survive because this was a time where the comic relief couldn't die. Then who would they use in the sequel? Number one, Jar Jar Binks. Most of you would have had no doubt who would be at the end of the list. Jar Jar is almost perfect in how useless he is. Like with Sam Wessel and Willie Scott, Jar Jar is another product of George Lucas's insane days of writing horrible characters and forcing us to watch films about them. Jar Jar is by far the worst attempt at comic relief by a mainstream film in the history of modern cinema. Jar Jar is infamous for being annoying, Moronic Bumbler, who is designed for us to sympathize with, but is so useless even at doing that. In the course of The Phantom Menace, Jar Jar manages to screw up every task, yet still manages to not only survive, but be treated as a hero. The cartoon space rabbit who falls over while standing still is served up to us as a lovable buffoon who we should still buy all the merchandising for. Audiences called out this BS in 1999, and Jar Jar became the icon for all the pain and incompetence that had come with the prequel trilogy. That's it for this countdown. And have a go!